So today we are going to be taking a look at Windows Phone 7 and uh, it's a brand new operating system that, uh, for smartphones that Microsoft just came up with. A total revamp of what we used to know as Windows Mobile. And the device that we're going to be looking at um, you know, to use to demo Windows Phone 7 is the LG Optimus 7. It's one of the devices that is already on sale in Singapore uh, that is running on Windows Phone 7. And then over here you have the Office application and which gives you OneNote, Microsoft Word as well as PowerPoint Excel. You can actually create new Excel and Word documents while you can only view PowerPoint. And Microsoft OneNote actually links with SkyDrive. All right. So this is another service that they link to SkyDrive. When you ever create, whenever you create a new notebook, they will actually link it into SkyDrive so that you can, uh, uh, you know, synchronize your notebooks online. And SkyDrive is also linked to the, the camera application. Whenever you take a picture, you can you can set in the settings to automatically load them into SkyDrive. And that way, you know, they kind of keep back up as well as make transferring photos very easy. You don't actually need to physically connect your phone to the computer to pull out pictures. You can just pull them out from line. Pretty much the way uh, the Microsoft Kin does it, except less elegant, elegantly. All right, so that's another service that they link to and um, so music and videos this is based on the uh, Microsoft Zoom which is very cool I, I'm very fond of it right so you got music videos podcast and the marketplace is basically the Zoom music store alright uh, which is only available in Europe and, and uh, United States but from Singapore you can browse the music store and what they do is that they change the background of your entire music player based on the last artist that you were actually browsing in the music store and you can see that uh, over here they show you the history, the last recent tracks, right? Or even though they show album art, but when you hit them, they, they, they are going to play back uh, the last track, which is kind of strange because they don't actually show you the track name, so uh, it can be a little bit confusing and you end up playing uh, unintentionally playing the wrong tracks. Uh, and then of course they show you what are new stuff you just added and um, you know, it's, it's a good application, you know, I, I'm quite fond of it. You need to transfer music to the phone using a physical cable, the micro USB cable, and you need to install the Zoom application. At this point in time, it only supports Windows, but Microsoft has promised a desktop client for the uh, uh, for Mac users. All right. Okay. The next one is the web browser, and it's a pretty standard web browser. All right, and it's not too bad. It's quite smooth. Um, you know, most of the web pages load properly. If you start running tests on this web browser, for example, if you run the ACID test and the HTML5 test, you'll notice that this browser performs very, very poorly. Most web browsers will actually get a very close to 100% on the ACID3 test, uh, both desktop web browsers and even the Android as well as the iOS Safari browser. But on this browser, we, it gave us a score of only 12%, which is very, very bad. On HTML5, uh, most of them get give you 130 plus, 180 plus. This one only gives you, uh, an, again, a two-digit number, which is which is uh, performs very poorly. But even though that is the case, um, most websites actually load quite fine. So I guess you know the, the standards for S3 and HTML5 must be very high because so far most of the web pages that I attempt to read, I don't have any funny funny things going on here, and it loads relatively well. You know, of course, there's no flash as you can see. Uh, the chances of them supporting Flash um, are not very high. I think you'll see them supporting Silverlight first. But, um, you know, and another thing is that because Windows Phone 7 is so new, not a lot of websites will actually recognize Windows Phone 7 devices. So most of the time you will be browsing desktop versions of websites uh, at the start for the first few months perhaps. Subsequently you'll start seeing um, uh, websites being able to support Windows Phone 7 and redirecting you to mobile versions of uh, the website. So that is uh, what the web browser is like. Uh, supports multiple tabs, right? Which looks a lot like uh, the Chrome browser on Android. Okay, and uh, likewise, like I mentioned earlier, you can add favorites and push them, pin them to the start screen. So that is the uh, Windows Phone 7 Internet Explorer. By the way, yeah, it's running on Internet Explorer. Okay, and now let me just talk about um, some of the bad things. Oh. Uh, of Windows Phone 7, there are some certain limitations, and that's because you know Windows Phone 7 is so new right now. There is no copy and paste, and there is no background running of background applications. And uh, you may argue that you know iOS didn't have them at the beginning as well. But here's something that uh, you know the other platforms, um, even though they didn't run multitasking at the beginning, they could do that this one can't do. Right? Let's say this is a third-party application, the official Twitter application, and it, as you can see, it takes some time to load and, and you know to load the timeline. And most of the time on other devices, if you actually lock the screen, the application will still be running in the background. But in the case of Windows Phone 7, when you unlock the screen, the application needs to reload itself. 
So as a result, uh, see, you reload the whole application, reload the timeline from scratch. So as a result, there's a bit of a, there's, there's quite a, a bit of lag uh, in terms of uh, you know you doing things uh, as far as third-party applications are concerned. So that is something that uh, hopefully Microsoft will fix soon because it's, it gets a little bit annoying, especially if you use things like Twitter a lot. Okay, and uh, the other thing is that there are certain funny limitations right now in terms of the settings. For example, you cannot add you know, hidden Wi-Fi networks. This is such a basic thing that is not supported on Windows Phone 7. There's no tethering uh, right now, neither. I, I don't think it has anything to do with carriers because, um, you know, in Singapore, for example, um, all smartphones that are capable of tethering can tether, including, you know, the iPhone. It's, you know, out of the box that, you know, no extra charge, no nothing, you get just get tethering. So this is, we know that it's a feature that Microsoft has not yet implemented on the Windows Phone 7. So and think little things like that, right? Um, there's still certain things that you that uh, other smartphones uh, can do that this one cannot. But uh, I think we're confident that as time passes, you know, uh, Microsoft will actually start improving them and add them in with, because they need to compete. Uh, and right now, for a start, you know, the, this is actually quite a joy to use simply because it's so different from most other smartphone uh, operating systems. Uh, out there. And another thing that uh, we, I think is very important is that Microsoft has enforced that no manufacturers can modify the, the operating system. The most they can do is introduce their own third-party applications and then because of that you won't get uh, you know uh, crappy you know user interfaces that you used to find on uh, on Windows Mobile and no crapware. Well maybe there might be crapware in the future but not now.